What's up? So on September 24th, I went to go see Blink-182 2011, and uh, this is the second tour that they've been to Florida on that I've seen in a row. So uh, here we go. Made a CD to listen to, got a mini map to explain my dumbass where I'm going, got a GPS. There's where we're going, to Jacksonville, Tampa. I also have the new Blink CD, because you know I'm good like that, and I want to know every lyric they have before they sing it. So there's my Blink tattoo. And here's the start of the drive, me jamming the new Blink CD. So this video is me doing a diary of me going to Tampa to see Blink. I like to do these diaries so I can look back and be like, hey, I remember when I did that. But I went alone and here's the drive. And while I live in Florida, and it's definitely hurricane season, so it definitely rained. It didn't rain a lot, but it rained a good little bit. I didn't do much commentary of me talking into the camera, I only did a couple clips, but um, I'm just going to give a live commentary through this of my experiences and what I thought and all that great stuff. But here's a little bit of clips that I actually did do some live commentary on, so enjoy listening to myself. This is Waldo. I don't like Waldo, I got a ticket Waldo. This damn place just got flea markets and a subway and that's like it. <laughs> I'm there. Yes, we're there. Now I shall go park. It is 5:19. Guess I went too bad of a drive. I'm pretty actually tired. I'm kind of ready to get the hell out of this car. Bumpy. Feels like there's no one here. I don't see any cars. But we're gonna park now, and we're gonna see what's up. And so I did park, and there was this huge long line out here, but I didn't really wait in this line because the moment I got here, the doors opened, and they all just flooded inside, so we didn't really have to wait in a line. But we did all get to see the Blink bus. The Blink bus is pretty cool, and got to see it for a second because everyone wanted to take pictures out in front of it. But I went out and I sat down on my $25 grass tickets that I thought were really lame. I was like, I don't like these grass tickets. I can barely see. My Zoom can barely see. So I should have maybe splurged for better tickets. This is how it looks in the grass, the area you don't want to be in. But when the first band came on, I decided that they were too far. And I was going to upgrade my tickets to seats. But I just want to say about the Matt and Kim, I think they're alright. I mean, I like how the drummer girl, she was like, it's hot in here, I'm going to take off my bra. And she like, took off a bra and started jamming without a bra. That's cool, sex sells. But these guys only have like a keyboard and drums. So, I mean, it's kind of inspiring to me being in a two-piece band, but I don't know, they're kind of cool, but I didn't like how many covers they did. But moving on, the show finally actually starts. I got in my new seats, and we watched some NCR. Alright, so you get the idea of MCR. I want to give you my opinion on My Chemical Romance. When they first came out, I was like a huge fan of them. I really loved their old CDs. Stuff like they're playing now. When they first came out, they came out with all their new stuff from their last CD. And I do not like it. It's pure like crap. They went all rock star egos and now they're writing crappy music. And that upsets me. But you know, they come out with nah, 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 which I just think sucks. I hate that song. I hate their last CD. But they ended on all their old epic stuff. And that's really where I loved them. And seriously, I didn't like it when they first started. But by the end, I fell in love with them all over again because they ended with all the stuff I grew up listening to. Like Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge and This Mirror Big Enough for the Both of Us. And just, they ended it really, really well with Cancer. And it was really pretty. But now, for the main course, the whole reason I'm here, Blink 182.
care of things they see. She killed the life of despair. You two were left to bleed. I'm drinking the pain goes down. Saw shadows in fire sheet. They saw you slowly drown. They stole you fall asleep. So as you guys are watching Blink play, I don't really talk too much, so you can actually listen in a little bit. But I just want to show you this. Travis Barker does this on every show. And I know you guys have probably seen it, but he freaking flies around his drum set on this huge ass thing that attaches to the freaking top of this dome. And he just goes flying around and playing drums. Tell me one other drummer in the world that does something like this. Like, there is no drummer out there that is on this next level. It's not even with his beats. He literally, every night, flies above the crowd on this huge thing that he invented. It's like the most craziest thing I've ever seen. No one, I mean no one, can get on his level. That is the most pro drummer I've ever seen. And of course, that's how they ended the show. They ended up damn it and a few joke songs, making everybody laugh and go crazy with the sparkles and lights. But um, I'm going to give you my opinion on the show. It is way too advertised. Like, oh my god, I'm sitting way back here because I couldn't afford to pay like $120 tickets for Pit. But god damn, Blink, I know you've been playing for almost 20 years, but you are too famous. I mean, it's why I love Aiden so much more than Blink nowadays. I grew up with Blink, but... I can never meet Tom Longan. I can't even see him within a distance of a mile without, you know, having a million people in front of me wanting to see him. They're too famous. I mean, this damn thing was not only advertised on the radio, but it was advertised on TV, the internet. I mean, hell, even if I got a fucking phone call, it'd probably be a text message saying, hey, Blink's coming on Honda Civic Tour. It was too fucking promoted. Like, it was insane how big promoted this was, and they sold out even more like you're already multi-millionaires let's sell out more and i get it i get it they're friggin mostly pop stars than punk stars you know they're with the big glamour but you know i was kind of depressed the whole time i'm not the type of person that likes to go to shows and stand out in the bleachers i'm the type of person that wants to be on the stage performing but um i went it was something to do better than sing at the house tampa was fun and um this is how they ended it So they ended it with joke songs, which is always really amusing. But um, 
they played a pretty good set. My favorite was After Midnight when they played that new song. It was really, really good. And that was probably the best song I think they played. But it was great. The crowd cheered for them as normal. Kissed their ass just like everyone else did. I mean, there's like, I mean, I think they said 18,000 people there. 18,000 people. So I'm pretty much just standing there going, wow, I will never live that dream of being that person on stage. Never. This is stuff I can't even comprehend. It is so huge. But, um, yeah, it's the type of person I am. I go to a rock show to see my favorite band and I get really envy because I'm not on that stage. And I also get really depressed. There's a lot of hot chicks around here. And I got too much love for our fellow women. I really do. It hurts me to see that many girls. But, um, it's pretty much it. I love this last little bit where it's slow motion, the last before they get off stage. And that's another tour diary completed. I have no clue when I'm going to go on another show. Probably not anytime soon. So, this might be the last one for a while. See you guys later. Peace.